welcome to MeanSide. Today, we will cover the topic Counting Principles, a grade 11 math AA topic in the IB. The topic mainly focuses on calculating the total amount of permutations or combinations in a given situation. The most efficient way of doing this is simply by using logic to find the answers. The first thing you need to know in order to solve all these kinds of problems is what factorials are. Factorials are basically just the product of all positive integers up till a given number. So, for example, the number 5 factorial is just 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. The second thing you need to know is what permutations and combinations are. Permutations are basically just the amount of ways in which a certain number of elements can be selected from a bigger set of elements. For example, the number 5p3 is the amount of ways a set of three elements can be selected from a bigger set of five elements. Combinations are basically just permutations, except the order in which the elements are selected is not necessary. Now I will show you how you can calculate the number of permutations and combinations. The formula for n, p, r is n factorial over n minus r factorial. And the formula for n choose r is n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. Let us take some examples to help us understand this. Let's say 5p3 is equal to 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial which is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2. And this is equal to 60. On the other hand, 5c3 is equal to 5 factorial over 3 factorial times 2 factorial. And this is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. Here the 3s can cancel, the 2s can cancel, this 2 can cancel with this 4, leaving 2, and we are just left with 10. You might have noticed that for the same values of n and r, there are more permutations and combinations. This is because every single combination has to be arranged six times before we get the number of permutations. This is because in permutations, the order in which the elements are present is important, but in combinations, it is not. Now we will do some practice problems in order to improve our overall understanding of the topic. Here in this question, we have n times n plus one factorial divided by n factorial. This can be re rewritten as n times n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on over n factorial. So now you might notice that this part over here is basically just n factorial because it is the product of all positive integers up till n. So we can just rewrite that as n times n plus 1 times n factorial over n factorial. And the n factorials just cancel, which leaves us with n times n plus 1. In the second part, we have n factorial minus n minus 1 factorial over n plus 1 factorial. So out of all these numbers, the smallest one here is n minus 1 factorial because n plus 1 is bigger than that and n is bigger than that. So we can try to rewrite these two terms in terms of n minus 1 factorial so that we can cancel n minus 1 factorial using the method we just discussed above. So n factorial is basically just n times n minus 1 factorial, as we got here. And 
we have then n minus 1 factorial over n plus 1 factorial. n minus 1 factorial can be taken out common from the numerator. So we can rewrite this as n minus 1 factorial times n minus 1 over now n plus 1 factorial is basically just n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 n minus 2 and so on which is n minus 1 factorial so we can just cancel n minus 1 factorial and we are left with the answer which is n minus 1 over n plus 1 times n in this second question we have to find out the number of four digit numbers we can make uh, with the use of these four numbers. And we cannot repeat the numbers. So we have five, six, seven, and eight. And we need to make a four digit number out of these numbers. So the easiest way of doing this, the simplest way, is just taking each digit and seeing how many options we have for it and then multiplying the total amount of options. How we do this is we take the four digits and we say that, okay, so we have four numbers and we have to choose one of those for the first digit. So we have four options. For the second digit, we already used one over in the first digit. So we only have three options left. Now we've used two, so we only have two more left. And since we've used three now, only one option is left for the final digit, and we are left with 4 times 3 times 2, which is 24. And that is the answer. There are 24 four-digit numbers which can be made using these four digits. For the second part, we have five options here, five numbers which we can choose from, and we have to make a four-digit number out of all of these. So there are two methods you can use for this. The first one is what we just did above. We can take the five digits and multiply the number of options we have for each digit. So here for the first digit, we have five options. Whereas for the second digit, we use one over here. So we only have four options now. Then we have three options here and two options here and then one option here. So this leaves us with four times five times three times two which is just 120. The second way you can do this question is by looking. So we have five options and we have to choose four uh, numbers out of these five. And the order in which the digits are selected is important because five, six, seven, eight would not be the same as eight, seven, six, five. So this can be written as five P four, which gives us 120. For the third part, we have seven, eight, nine, and zero. So this is pretty similar to the first part, except there's a zero here. And why that is important is that zero cannot be on the first digit, because if it is, then this number would only be a three digit number, not a four digit number and it has to be a four digit number. So we just do the same process we just did, except over here for the first digit, we only have three options. And then for the second digit, since we use one of these three, and now we can use zero for the second digit, we have three options again. Then we have two options, and finally we have one option for the last digit. And this gives the answer as 18. Now for the final question, we have three parts and there are eight boys and five girls who attend a senior mathematics club. We have to find how many ways a team of six students can be made to represent the school if in a part there is no gender restriction. So with no gender restriction, the total amount of people we have to choose from is 13 because there are eight boys and five girls and eight plus five is 13. And we have to choose six of them. So 13 choose six. 
It's not permutations because the order in which the students are selected is not important. What is important is the students that actually do get selected to form the group. So you can just put this into your calculator and you should get the answer as 1716. For the next part, we have the team is to be made up of three girls and three boys. So out of the eight boys, we have to choose three boys. So that's eight choose three. That's the amount of combinations we can have to choose the, num uh, choose the boys in the group. And we have five choose three options for the number of girls. And since these are chosen separately, we just multiply them because they are in the same situation, but they are two different groups. So if you put this into your calculator, eight choose three comes out to be 56 and five choose three comes out to be 10. So this totals to 560. Now for the third part, we have to have at least two of each gender in the team. So there are three cases which we have to consider here. There should be at least two of each gender. So there has to be either two boys and four girls, or there has to be three boys and three girls, or there has to be four boys and two girls. So for the first scenario, we have to choose two boys out of eight and four girls out of five. Putting this into the calculator, you get 28 multiplied by five, which is 140. For the second case, we have to choose three boys out of eight, and we have to choose three girls out of uh, five. So we get 56 multiplied by 10, which is just 560. Now for the third case, we have to choose four boys out of eight, and we have to choose two girls out of five. For this one, we get 70 multiplied by 10, which is 700. So to find the final answer, which is the total amount of cases we have, we have to add the ones we already have, which gives us 140 plus 560 plus 700, and this totals to 1400. So that is the final answer. There are 1400 ways of making a group of six if two of each gender have to be included.